It's not really not that big of a deal, because now we draw, and now we've got five, count them, five cards in our hand, and we get an Athlazot, deepest portrayal for free. That Ladies and gentle mages, civilians across the multiverse, welcome back to another episode of the Man of Man, and today we've got a juicer for you. Before we get dig into the deck, make sure to leave a like. The button looks just like this, and it helps out the channel tremendously. I greatly appreciate it. But before we do that, let's just go and dig in Oracle Esper. Let's get, I mean, this is a big old pile, so let's kind of just start at the core essence. We don't have any one drops. We've got a lot of Restless Reef, so this is going to be a slower, sort of mid-rangey, sort of control type of deck. I guess we'll just kind of like get into it. We got the Get Lost, and we got the soul partition um sometimes i prefer this obviously because get lost there's a lot of rusco clockmakers, which is why we love this but we'll get into that in a second the midnight clock the get lost cannot hit artifacts and it can't hit uh certain other things like that so i do kind of like the soul partition for that for that reason the phyrexia missionary is really really good it's got life link which does help out because we do have things into the graveyard things can die we do run creatures so things can die and we do have malcolm and rona as one silver bullets legendary creatures these things both like have you draw a card discard a card i think i do prefer malcolm just because it does do a little bit more damage and you kind of get a little bit more upside later in the game but i still like rona as well and plus it's a legendary so we're running both of them go for the throat because of reasons obviously but that's the kind of reason we have that I got the white sun's twilight because that is kind of a finisher later in the game creating wiping the board gaining that life creating those little mites obviously this is one of but Pull of the Mist Moon. This is going to be our first alchemy card that we're kind of addressing here. Um, basically, you're just removing a you're just removing from exiling something until it leaves the battlefield. You can kick it, and then you give like I know there's a lot of text here. <laughs> if you kick this, you're going to allow another non-land permanent in your hand to exile something until it leaves the battlefield as well. So that is what that does. Absolutely love this thing. Um, Legion to Ashes. This is pretty straightforward. Sorcery exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls and all tokens with the same name. Pretty simple here. I do like to exile because, again, with the one ring, obviously we are running two one rings. It is indestructible, so you have to exile a lot of stuff here. And for those token decks that go wide, there is a lot of them. There's the, really the uh, Handborg in Mono Red. This is really, really good for them. I am only running one of these. Uh, this card is one of the best design cards ever, in my opinion. At the beginning of your end step, you're going to scry two, and then you're going to mill one card on your first turn, mill two on your next turn, then three on your next turn. Eventually, they're not going to be able to take all the life that this thing kind of hits them for. And if you can resolve this versus control, it's pretty much lights out. The Conundrum of Bulls, another silver bullet here. Seek a card with mana value less than the number of cards in your hand, then seek a card with mana value greater than. And then on the third, you can just cast it for free and equal to the amount of cards in your hand absolutely love this card shelly because shelly does shelly things rusco getting into the midnight clock this it's very very easy obviously uh each opponent losing one life and gaining one life is kind of like a de facto win condition in and of itself but the midnight clock eventually lets you draw all your cards when you have the oracle of the alpha out and you get that power nine cards let's just kind of i want to kind of wait for the oracle of the alpha because this is like kind of the fun stuff you have the time walk you've got the time twister black lotus and it's just we, we know what the power nine is it's the power freaking nine being able to cast your power nine and then for like the midnight clock you can just kind of recycle everything and play it all again very very wonderful the one ring we kind of already went over the slayer of fear first strike lifelink you need a lot of lifelink because there's a lot of aggro decks that can kind of just blow you out of the water and yeah i mean at the beginning of the post combat main phase if you gain life this turn seek a card with the highest mana value among cards in your library with mana value less than or equal to the amount of life you gain this turn and we've got a lot of life link that's kind of the reason we've got phyrexian missionary we got the um uh shelly the apocalypse etc etc so just an absolute banger of a card we got the aklazots more life link more discard more annoyingness if you kill it it's going to come back sunfall because obviously um there is the legends deck where a lot of like indestructible so sunfall you, you kind of have to have it sunfall is the best sweeper pretty much in the format eternal wanderer virtual persistence and kaya i guess we'll kind of go over these this is pretty much the deck here we're pretty much just going to control in a bunch of various different ways we got the oracle of the alpha hopefully we can get into at least some sort of power nine nine cents but this is the deck consider joining the channel i'd greatly appreciate it you'd be helping me out as the content creator go ahead and subscribe if you have not already and without further ado let's get ready to vanquish some enemies Sea barge, how we doing here? Okay, so we have no white sources and only two lands, but I, uh, I think we'll, we'll be okay. Especially if we can get the orb out, I think we'll be okay. So let's go ahead and drop our restless reef, alleviate that from being tapped, coming in tapped, and yeah, we'll be all right. So turn two, we have a restless reef, which I'm glad it's a land in general because if we can resolve the pounce we will be fine. So looking good, and we do have the Argar 
Art Car Wastes. I'm saying that correctly. So let's go ahead and resolve. This is one of the best designed cards in all of Magic, in my opinion. So it kind of is the way it works is let's go ahead and I think we'll go ahead and put. Well, I definitely want land. Let's put the Restless Fortress on. Let's put actually. Let's go for the Restless Fortress on top. I do kind of want the lands, especially if they're going to be running like Grixis. That is going to tell me that it'll most likely be some sort of like grindier matchup. And I would prefer to have the creature matches or the creature lands that way. But still not a big deal. I'm thinking I'm just going to drop Shelly. They could have a counter or something. This is Grixis. I don't even really know what we're playing yet. They haven't really played a card yet, so... But going back to this, this Ornthok card, it's a really, really good. Every single turn, you're going to scry two, and then you're going to allow them... They can either have you mill one extra card. So the first turn is one, second turn is two, second, third turn is three, etc., etc. And then they're going to lose all of the converted mana cost of all the milled cards. So they go for the Ballad. That's the Ballad. That is actually a really neat card. Oh, okay, so this is actually, speaking of neat alchemy cards, let's go in for the Conundrum of Bowls. But the, th the way this works is you're going to seek a card, the first time you're going to seek a card with mana value less than the number of cards in your hand. So let's do this before we drop the Underground River. We get an Oracle of the Alpha for free, which is absolutely beautiful. Now let's do our land drop, and now the Palantor will go through. So more land here. Um... I guess, I guess we'll put this away, they most, I mean, I don't know, I guess we'll put them away, I'm not really sweating it either way. We do have five lands, so the way that this works is we will be able, after our draw step, we do have the Conundrum of the Bulls, and they'll be able to grab us something pretty juicy here. So, flame, um, okay, that's why I put those away, but they only have four life, and that actually puts them in kill range of the Restless Reef, so... Um, now we get a free Virtue of Persistence, because we had five. After the draw step, we had five. So we seek a card with six or greater. That's how that works. So now let's go for the Oracle of the Alpha. And get the Power Nine in our freaking deck. That's absolutely amazing. And I am going to go for the Soul Partition, because this is how it's going to work. So the Conundrum of Bulls, count the number of cards in your hand. You may cast a spell with that equal after you draw. So after I draw, that would be six... So I need to make sure I cast the Soul Partition on something. Even if I cast it on our own Oracle of the Alpha, I think I'm going to do that because then we get to drop Alklazot for free because it has five mana cost. I think that's going to be the play. So Melt Through. Well, I mean, that does perpetually do two damage. Uh, yeah, we don't... It'll be a 2-1 for the rest of uh, its existence. Another Melt Through. I think I am. Let's go for the Soul Partition. And again, yes, I'm very, very sure. We can um, conjure another set of the Power Nine into our deck. Um, and they just get rid of it. That's absolutely fine. They get the course to go up. But like I said, that's okay. It's not really not that big of a deal. Because now we draw. And now we've got five. Count them. Five cards in our hand. And we get an Athlazot. Deepest Betrayal for free. That is right. And I don't even think it matters. Considering if they don't have any spot removal. We're going to go for in for the Restless Reef. And that's just going to be lethal anyway. But I'm assuming they do. They're holding up priority for something here. And they actually don't. Wow. Okay, that was easy, easier than I even thought. Okay, so we got our cool little Ornthok here and a Sunfall and a Kaya. A little bit slow of a start, but as long as our opponent is as well, if we were playing against Mono Red, we might be kind of out of luck. But fortunately, we're not, and we're, we're going to be okay. We're going to be just fine. As long as... What's Demir? Let's see if it's Demir or if it's Esper. I mean, obviously, we being Esper. I think Esper is a little bit better. They've got a little bit more toys to play with. But, I don't know. I don't know. Demir... Mm, I don't know. I guess I don't really know. Yeah, so it's definitely going to be Esper there. Okay, so as long as they don't have a counter spell, I'm actually not running any counter spells, which, I don't know, maybe just running a good old-fashioned negate. I do run that in Pirates and other stuff like that, so I'm not against it. I just think in this build, I just kind of am not. I don't know. Maybe I should, but... Okay, so again, you know the drill. We're going to scry two, and I'm, I'm sure they're going to... Um, I think I would rather take the Rusko than the Conundrum of the Bulls in this match. So let's go ahead and take the Rusko instead. Because I'm sure they're just going to mill it. They're not going to let us have it. Oh, Rusko. Okay, so Rusko meets Rusko. We're going to match him up with the Rusko here. Midnight Clock. Okay, so definitely, yeah, we're just going to go for the Rusko ourselves. We're just going to kind of try and match him. It kind of sucks, but as long as we have the Orb, I think there is a way that we could kind of be okay. So with the Captain and Crossroads, I guess we'll go for blue so that I don't have to pay for blue. I guess it could matter, especially in a really... This is going to be a really grindy matchup, kind of um, by default. So the Phyrexian mis uh, Missionary, I don't know if I really want the Missionary here. Um, Malcolm's decent. They probably are just going to mill me out anyway. So I think I'm probably putting a little bit too much thought in this. 
But Scrying 2, I guess we'll... Yeah, the Missionary is probably not very good. I think the Missionary, obviously, a lot better in um, aggro matchup. This is a control matchup. Let's be a little bit more grindy. So do get rid of the Legion to Ashes. That is nice. I don't know if I'm going to go for the Soul Partition on the Midnight Clock or the Rusko. Edict. So we're going to lose our Rusko, but we have the Midnight Clock. And how do we actually win this game? I think the way that we win this game is... Well... I think we're just going to outvalue them. I mean, right now we are winning the life total game. And if we go for, like, the one ring, we could go... For, we, we have one of two options here. We could go for the one ring. We actually have a lot of options. We go for the one ring and just go for the draw. This does resolve, which is nice. I want to get this down. And then I can go for the throat on the Rusko, or I can go for the soul partition. Let's go for the throat on Rusko. I don't even really want to... I don't think it's necessary to draw with the one ring. Or should I go for the soul partition on the midnight clock? The Midnight Clock can get out of hand very, very quickly. Let's just get rid of you first. I don't really care about taking damage, especially if I have this orb out. I'm going to win the damage, um, so I don't really care. And I'm thinking... Sunfall... I kind of want the land for the Kaya. So, oh, wow, okay, as I said, there was a decent... Wow, they actually take a lot of damage there. We could have just snuck lethal there if we got rid of the land in a 3-drop. That actually would have been pretty crazy, but that's actually a, a really risky thing to do for them, so... But either way, um, I want to get the land for the Kaya, and I wasn't thinking they would let me draw, so they have to let me draw now that they're at 3 life. And just seeing a Rusko isn't that threatening, but now we've got this, we can go for Kaya, and this is actually really good, because we can go for Kaya and steal the Rusko, essentially, so... I think that's just going to be the play. Let's go for the Kaya, Intangible Slayer Hexproof, let's go. Alright. So let's go ahead and hit Kaya. Let's go ahead and go for the Rusko. So we get another Midnight Clock, and we're gonna ping them for one damage every single turn. Now, unfortunately, I do not. So they're gonna. This is nice because they're gonna let us take whatever we want. They get lost. I think we'll keep. Let's go for the Shelly. They have four life, so I think there's a decent chance that we can kind of just finish them off for lethal here. They're gonna let us draw. They obviously can't take this. Shelly would be lethal, and it, like they just can't. They can't mill because that, that would just be it. Okay, so they actually are playing, so that's actually pretty crazy. I thought for sure they were leaving there. But we have the one ring draw. It really sucks that they get rid of our Kaya. That way, I mean, Kaya just can just, like, drain them for three life every single turn. I'm actually not running the Edict in this deck, but maybe I should. Um, yeah, this definitely burns a little bit. I don't have any creature lands. Creature, a creature land, like a Restless Fort, or not Fort, a, a Restless, um, go for throat, that's fine. Yeah, a Restless land can pretty much take away this game right now. Unfortunately, we don't have that. And if they tap for pain one more time, actually Shelly could as well. So still not that worried. Let's go for the one ring and take our draw here. Another land, which is okay. And the midnight clock, we have to kind of... I want to play out our hand too, because of the midnight clock, eventually it's just going to be able to just kind of like do its thing. So we got more land. I really would like a creature land, especially when they have the three life there. Let's just go in for the Shelly. And then let's go in for the one ring so that we can draw out the Shelly. So, Impulse, that's fine. Okay. So, they're going, to, they're going to dig for something here, and this is pretty much going to conclude their turn. I don't think they really have anything that they can cast for one. So, if I go for the one ring, and now we have the Shelly, we're going to offset our life. And we have the Restless Fortress. I guess that is a, a big oopsie on my part, because I already dropped the land. So, now we don't have that Restless Fortress that we can't swing in the next turn. I think I was actually just talking about that in the other match, that I typically like to do all my drawing. Um... So that's, that's really unfortunate. I'm going to go ahead and shelve both these. I don't need land, especially a non-creature land. I don't need that. So, eh, okay. I think we're sitting okay. Unfortunately, yeah, really not getting down that Restless Fortress really does burn a little bit. But, um, down to one. They can't... Oh, so here it is. Here is the Chorus card. They have also have Union of the Third Path. So they get rid of both of our cards and they gain three life. That's a pretty good swing there. That actually makes me a little bit nervous here. Now it becomes... I'm still, I, feel, I still think we're fine, but now this becomes a little bit sweatier. The Eternal Wanderer. Let's go ahead and get down this Restless Fortress. That is a no-brainer. I gotta get down this Eternal Wanderer. Hopefully they don't have um, a Counterspell or anything like that. They obviously probably have something here just because they are holding up priority. So if we can get down this Eternal Wanderer, the Eternal Wanderer is so good because we can take the Eternal Wanderer and we can flicker the, the One Ring, which is really, really nice. But I think in this case, I think I'm actually... Do I want to flicker the One Ring? I don't think so. We can actually flicker our Midnight Clock too if we liked our hand, which we don't. So I think I'm actually just going to make a 2-2 two -two double strike here and just kind of put a threat down here for lethal. We can win this together. Sure, sure, that's fine. 
And again, with the Ornthok here, we're going to be able to just kind of draw something every single turn. And I do want this Rustless Fortress. I think the White Sun... Well, I definitely don't want the White Sun's Twilight. Well, I guess I do. I guess I do. Because if we have the White Sun's Twilight, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I mean, the White Sun's Twilight, they are running creatures. I'm not even really sure what they're running. They're running like Rusko. They are running creatures. So, I mean, if we could wipe the board and just put some 1-1s out there, I always like that. But we are probably, by the next turn, going to be able to um, go for the Midnight Clock anyway. So, I don't think it really matters that much. I think I'm putting a little bit too much stock in what doesn't matter. All right. So, the Midnight Clocks go up. And we have two Midnight Clocks, which is pretty wild. Take a little bit of damage. And now we have the Virtue of Persistence. This will drop you... And I'm going to slam down a Virtue of Persistence. If we go for the Restless Fortress, unfortunately, if they kill the 2-2, we still do not have... Ooh, Union of the Third Path. Okay. So Union of the Third Path, they're going to gain some more life. Um, We're doing a decent chunk here. Do two there, then we're going to deal five here with the double strike. So down to four. And I think we're just going to create some more damage here. Some more damage on the board. Feels pretty good to me. The Midnight Clock is going to go off eventually. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I can't go for that. But I think it was worth it. Two Oracle of the Alphas. I think we'll keep both of the, the, both of the Oracle of the Alphas. It's pretty nice. Sure. Doesn't really matter here because, yeah, by the next turn, the, the Midnight Clock's going to go off anyway. So it doesn't really matter. A Rusko Clockmaker. So let's at least we get the hold up go for the throat this way. That's fine. Um, I think, you know, the third pass. So they hit us for one more on the rust or the clockmaker. So, again, though, we have a game here. This is absolutely... I don't know where we sit. We do have the, another uh, midnight clock, but now they do as well. So I don't I don't know where we sit here. We do have a Restless Fortress, and there's the, uh, the Ballad. And they're going to gain some more life. Get rid of our creatures. And how much do they gain? Five, because their intensity is five now. And that Ballad... I don't know. i got to take these earphones out, because that Ballad is getting loud. <laughs> so, alright, I don't know where we sit here. Let's go for the Midnight Clock, and that's going to put our Graveyard into the deck. Yada, yada, yada. So now we do have some more Restless cards, which is very, very nice. Um, it makes our Conundrum of the Bowls a little bit awkward, but we... Yeah, I think we can probably still go for it. Just so that we can... I mean, we get something less. So, go for the throw. I guess it's fine. I mean, it's not like I dislike it. I still think we're just kind of hanging in there. Now we got some more Restless lands down. And I could flicker something. I think it's just better. It's kind of gross, but just creating a 2-2 two -two double striker every single turn. We can win I don't know. Together. I mean, it feels pretty good. So I could go for Restless Fortress or hold up the re um, like some of these like get lost or go for the throats. I think we've seen enough of their deck to where I don't think they're really running a whole lot of creatures. So maybe I, I don't know. Definitely like the Shelly. We'll keep the Shelly. So they're going to have a draw the card. They're not going to mill. Nope. We'll just get a discard a land, that's no big deal. And we'll just kind of hold up the go for the throw and the get lost. Because at this point, they're at 17 life. Now that the Restless Fortress is a little bit more irrelevant. Still have the Conundrum of the Fishbowls, but I actually do not have Legions to Ashes. Okay, they're going to get rid of the Eternal Wanderer. I'm thinking, I hope they play something that we can kind of do something with the um, the conundrum. Just because I have a Kaya, which is at least a 7 drop, and then we can kind of make use of that. So let's go for the throw here. Go for the throw on the Oracle. But now, they have their own Midnight Clock, and they have their own Power 9 into their library. So that's pretty wild. Legion's Chant. Okay, this is another Chant card. I'm not too familiar. Return any number of creature cards with total mana. Whoa. Okay, so they're going to get everything back into the graveyard. Unfortunately, it's only a Rusko and another Oracle of the Alpha. But that is that is pesky, because now they get they have two sets of the Power Knight into their into their library. Okay, Rusko the Clockmaker, making clocks, doing what Rusko does. I actually, I don't think I've ever seen those card sleeves, so nice little card sleeves there. Conundrum of the Bulls is going to go off, which is kind of nice. Go for the map tokens, okay. This is definitely a grindy matchup. Mm. I don't think it's necessary to draw out the One Ring. I mean, we've got plenty of draw power, so they got their own Midnight Clocks going on. Hmm. How do we escape this? 
We draw, take the conundrum of the bulls, which is nice. We do get to seek a card and we get a free virtue of persistence, which is wonderful. We definitely like that. Can we answer it is the question. I think we definitely want to get the restless reef down. That's always kind of the um, the name of the game in these kind of kind of grab grindier matchups. Mm. If we swing, we have double strike. And we just kind of like uh, we. I was debating on going for virtual persistence, but I'm okay with just trading here. I don't think that's not that big of a deal. If we drop Shelly, if we drop Shelly, we could theoretically punish them for the Midnight Clocks. They'd have to kind of do that. So I think Shelly's kind of a no-brainer. But if I go for Virtual Persistence, that's a little bit more persistently annoying. Persistently annoying. <laughs> I don't know where I come up with this stuff. So let's do that. And I think I'm just going to drop a Shelly. Sure. Okay. Esper Control versus Esper Control. Let's see what we got. We go for one more clock power thingy and we're gonna be able to get another thing i don't want another one ring so i think we'll take legions of ashes but i don't think it really matters because the midnight clock is gonna be able to go off anyway so i don't think it really matters here don't think it really matters they're gonna let me draw and the midnight clock's gonna do its thing so i'd rather it be like a yeah it's a sorcery you can't really cast it so it's fine Okie dokie, so we gain a little bit of life, which is nice, I and mean, that's not that's the uh, that's the most relevant part of that. But midnight clocks are gonna go off, and we're just hanging in there. We're just hanging in there. Unfortunately, the conundrum thingy, I don't know how this is gonna work. So the ballad, we would need like a seven drop for like the the conundrum to kind of go off here. Uh, midnight clock, yep. So they're doing this on their own turn, which is a little weird. I mean, I don't think they have to do this on their own turn. Mox Emerald. They're kind of losing some steam here. If we can find a way to get rid of this Midnight Clock, we can kind of, like, deny them their value. Because they only have one more card in their hand here. So, order the... Tr um, yeah, I guess we'll go... Wait, 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 wait. Let's go for... Okay, let's go for... Shelly. I can't remember the order. Hold on, hold on. I can't remember the order. I don't know if I picked the right order. Because if I go... Because the Midnight Clock's going to put everything in my graveyard. Into I didn't. I didn't pick the right order. Son of a gun, the Midnight Clock's going to resolve first, and the Virtue resolves second, so I don't even get the Shelly because it was in my own graveyard. Oh, that feels terrible. Oh, that feels terrible. The problem is I even was even cognizant of it, too, and I just kind of was going too fast. Ouch. Okay. Well, no cr no point in over crying over spilt milk. We, we can still win this, definitely. We go for Kaya. Kaya is a persistent threat. Um... Get Lost can't really hit the Midnight Clock, which is kind of brutal. So how can we really get rid of this Midnight Clock? So they're going to draw some more cards here. I don't really want them to do that. I guess I could go for the One Ring to search for some more answers, but I have to be kind of wary of my life as well. I guess we just drop Kaya. Hello, Kaya. Get in, do some damage, get out. Sounds easy enough. Draw two cards and they scry one. Let's just kind of let's just kind of ding them down. Let's go for the Rusko. I think we can probably outlast them, especially if we have our own Midnight Clock. I think... I think there's a world where we can kind of outlast them. Phyrexian Missionary, yeah, we don't really want that. It's either that or I go for the One Ring and just kind of draw and try to get like a Soul Partition, but that feels a little bit desperate. I don't know, I, I just think we're in a little bit better of a situation to where we don't have to be that desperate. I don't know, maybe maybe not. The Midnight Clock's going to draw them seven cards, but like we have a way better board presence here. Um, and we also, like I said, with the Virtue of Persistence as well, yeah, if they go for a Midnight Clock, they do have to use up quite a bit of their resources. And I'm going to have to edit this, because our opponent seemingly has conceded. I mean, I don't know. I, it, I think it's a little bit premature. But yeah, they took all the time out. The Roper concedes by default. To save. How we doing here? How we doing? Okay, got the Malcolm. Absolutely love getting this Restless Fortress down. The Restless Fortress can win you matches. I actually made a short ranking all the new Restless ones. Um, and I put Restless Fortress dead last. I'm kind of eating crawl on that a little bit. I think it's a little bit better than perceived. I think the white one, the white, the Celestia colored one is the one I use the least. But let's go in for this. I don't want the the little mite to kill our Virtual Persistence later in the game. So we'll, we'll, we'll just do it now. I could go for Malcolm or just go for Rona. They do very, very similar things, and they're both legendary, so I like running one of them. Another hay hay Haywire Mite comes out to play, but I'm actually okay with this. Just having a little Haywire Mite 
actually isn't that big of a deal, especially because if we're going against Gruul, typically they just kind of steamroll you, so going against these little mites, I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead and just keep it. Gotta go in for the Malcolm and just kind of flash that thing in, and we'll be okay. This will be absolutely fine with me. I always think the Haywire Mite is a spider with reach. It actually is not. It's actually a mite. A mighty mite, but uh, never not a spider. Not a spider, it does not have reach. So let's see what you got here. Ooh, a spear tail. Okay, not a big deal. We're still going to flash in the Malcolm. We have to be kind of careful, because if we don't take care of the spear tail, they can kind of hit the entire board for one, and that would kill our Malcolm. Well, that's okay. Thankfully, we do get another land, and I think we're looking actually pretty okay. Um, let's swing in. I, I always want to do the Malcolm thing where we draw it and take a good look at what we got going on here before we do anything. And that is what I like about not dropping the Underground River. You got to be careful. I think I'm going to get rid of you. Maybe that is a mistake. I think this deck, we already have a Virtual Persistence, so I kind of like that. So let's go for Legions to Ashes, and let's get down our Restless Fortress. I want him to draw with Malcolm, just because I've played enough of this deck where you draw into the, like, a, a tap land, and you're like, oh crap, uh, <laughs> I dropped the Underground River premature, and now I'm not as efficient. So the Dark Sage Scion, this is actually not that big of a deal. They do get to cast something for, for one, and then the intensity increases one by every turn. So it's one, then two, then three, but they only have one card in their hand. And getting back this Might actually is not that threatening, so I don't really care. I think we'll do the same exact trick that we just did. Let's go for Malcolm, swing on in. Let's draw before we take a look at what we've got going on here. White Sun's Twilight, that is one of our finisher cards, so I absolutely love that. Man, I, I don't really want to get rid of the Rona. Mm, I would like the... I don't know. I don't know. I do kind of want to keep the lands, especially if we have Virtual Persistence and the White Sun's Twilight. So I guess we will get rid of the Rona. It feels not great. I really do like Rona in this deck, but we already have Malcolm doing its thing, so I guess we'll just kind of chill on that. Next turn, we'll be able to go in for White Sun's Twilight or Virtual Persistence, depending on how wide they go with the board. But yeah, I think we're looking okay here. With the little uh, Jar Soul, the, the Dark Sage Scion here, uh, they could. What's like the best thing they could do? Go for like a Lightning Strike. Yeah, see, they 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 have nothing in their graveyard to even kind of replay, so I'm not really worried about that. I guess, I guess we'll let this go. If I if I'm going for White Sun's Twilight, I don't really want to go for Soul Partition anyway. And at this point, I think I might just go for Virtual Persistence. I am at 13 life, which is a little bit awkward. And they are Gruul. And they, by the way they're playing, they don't really have a whole lot of cheap stuff. So they might actually just be like a big Gruul. So they might just play down something crazy with haste or something, which makes me a little nervous. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead. We have a Sunfall now. So now, we have, now we're kind of in a weird spot. One, two, three, four, five. We can kind of set up for like the soul partition, go for spot removal, or we can kind of just clear the board. I think I'm... This is kind of a weird spot. This, this really is, because I don't even really know what I want to do. I guess we're going to go for Sunfall. I know that gets rid of our Malcolm, but right now the Malcolm, I don't really have anything in my hand that I want to cast anyway. With the course count, it, it feels a little weird. It, it does feel a little weird. Maybe, because well, the alternative was keeping the Soul Partition and probably getting rid of either the land or the Sunfall. I want to keep the land for the Virtue of Persistence. We do have at least something in the graveyard to kind of make use of that, plus that's an Everlasting Threat. We get a 4-4 four, four here. 13 life, there's no way they can swing in for lethal. Uh, Hammer Skull, it's not that big a deal. And we still have a White Sun's Twilight. I think that was the best move, but it's close. It's really, really close. If they had, oh, I love this card, the Conundrum of the Bulls absolutely a banger of a card so um i'm i think we're gonna do this just because i do have the the, the blocker that i can kind of cast let's do this before we drop the underground river it'll be well we're actually not running one drop so it doesn't really matter but the conundrum of the bulls i want to get this online pretty quick because the virtual if we drop the virtual persistence we are going to take a, a hit and i don't really want to do that so we got another land which is pretty nice here and I would prefer it to be a tap land. That's kind of why I was waiting to drop my land. Of course, you want to get the Restless Fortress, the Restless Reefs, etc., etc. out. But now, I think we probably... You know what? We do need seven lands for the Virtue of Persistence anyway. So let's go ahead and just do this. The Conundrum of the Bulls can do its thing. This is a little risky, c considering that... They could just drop something super crazy. Belligerent Yearling is not something I consider super crazy. And I'm going to use this 4-4, which kind of sounds not optimal. But I think it is in this case. Let's go for this, and this is going to chump block. Yep, we're just going to chump block here. And I want them to go as wide as possible. And then I'm going to hit them with a White Sun's Twilight. We're going to gain life. We're going to have the Conundrum of the Bulls. Should be a pretty good time. 
I want to say like a monstrous rage or something. Like what? What? Wow, they do. They have a monstrous rage. Okay, well, um, don't think that's gonna be enough here. We have pull of the mist moon. That is an absolute banger of a card. And now, now I think is we're almost into that point where we can start playing with our food here. And I think let me just kind of map out what I want to do here because with the conundrum of the bulls, you always gotta kind of be take a mental tally. So if I go for the White Sun's Twilight, let's play the land. Go for the White Sun's Twilight. That way we gain six life and make six tokens. And then when we draw next turn, I guess we can go for the pull of the Mist Moon for free. I think that's pretty good. Back up to 13. We've got these little mites. Pugnacious Hammer Skull. And with the Conundrum of the Bulls, it's always after you draw, of course. So we'll have three cards in the hand. And then we'll go for pull of the Mist Moon for absolutely free. And we'll get rid of their biggest threat, which seems going to be is going to be the 6-6 six, six Hammer Skull here. We can go for the Oracle of the Alpha. It actually doesn't really matter too much here. I guess um, I guess we'll actually go for the Oracle of the Alpha. I'm not even really sure what I want to do yet with the Pull of the Miss Moon. But if we go for Pull of Miss Moon, we could actually kick it. And this is why I love the Pull of the Miss Moon. I don't see the Pull of the Miss Moon being played really ever. But you can actually kick it. And then you can uh, double up on the removal spells. As long as you have a permanent in your hand. That's a non-land permanent. So I think, I mean... Unfortunately, we do not have enough to go for the one ring and kick the Miss Moon, but we can still play the Miss Moon. And uh, they go, they hit us with a year ago. I know. I, I am playing a little bit slow here. Uh, well, cheers to you. I think they're being a little salty because they know that they're going to lose here, unfortunately. But I am taking a little. This one's I can kind of understand. Sometimes I get aggravated with it, but I can't understand this one. We'll, we'll speed it up here a little bit. So time twister. Each player shuffles their hand and draws seven cards. That is a fun card. I think we're just going to go for pull of the Miss Moon here, and just kind of get rid of the Hammer Skull. And uh, yeah, let's go and attack in. I, like I said, we're at 13 life. We've got the one ring protection. I think it's pretty much all but over. We're doing five damage. I don't really know how relevant the toxic counters are going to be because they still have one block. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, they only have one, one more card in their hand. The game's probably over, and they, yeah, they just scoop it up. GG's. Walhalla. Well, hello, Walhalla. How you doing here? Got no blue, but we'll be okay. We got white, we'll be all right, we'll be all right. We actually need double blue for the conundrum of the bulls. So that is a little bit scary, but we got the we got the captivating crossroads, we'll be absolutely okay. I'm actually gonna go for this and go for blue. This is gonna have to come in tapped. So I wanna drop my Oracle Alpha specifically on turn three. So I'm actually just gonna forego this whole partition for a turn. Vine Soul Spider. So at the beginning of your end step, put a random land card from your library into your graveyard. Interesting. Why do you want lands in your graveyard? I guess they have like the descent stuff. That makes sense, I guess. But we'll see what you got going on with Mr. Spider there. We get the power line into our library with the Oracle of the Alpha. And, you know, the Oracle of the Alpha, it's it, it's better than I thought. I thought kind of like the power line, you know, you draw into like a Mox Jet or something. It's like, what am I going to do with this? But like, we got so many things. Up, it's never really dead. Like, it's just a lot better than I thought. I knew the Oracle of the Alpha was good. It's better than I thought. So let's go uh, Haywire Mites, not that big of a deal. We take three from Mr. Spider, it's not a big deal. I don't have double blue for the uh, Conundrum of the Bulls, which is kind of unfortunate. But I do have enough for a Malcolm and a Soul Partition, so eh. And the turn. The only thing that's unfortunate, let's get, let's get the Spider. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, these things are a nightmare. Always falling out of my ears. But let's. Get, I think it's not that big of a deal. Get the Wren. We can use Soul Partition on the Wren and then go for Malcolm. I think that's fine. Sure. It has Vigilance and Indestructible... Not Indestructible, Hexproof. That's fine. We do take quite a bit of damage here, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. The rest is Cottage. Yeah, we don't really care about that. Oracle of the Alpha did its thing. Gave us the Power 9. We're okay with that. Soul Partition right on the Ren. Sure, let's just do this now. Sure. And we are taking... I, I could use Malcolm for defense, but we do have an Eternal Wanderer, and I think we're going to use the Malcolm and just swing in. So we are going to take 7 here. That takes us down to 10. I think we'll be okay, but it is a little scary. I don't think they're full-blown aggro, so, like, I mean, I, I think we're okay for at least another turn here. They put another land in their graveyard, which is a little cute. Let's go for the Malcolm, and most likely we are going to discard our Conundrum of Bulls. The Conundrum of Bulls is a very, very awesome card. Restless Fortress. Um, let's swing in first. Just before I want to make any decisions, let's swing in. This does not have reach. The spider is tapped out, so we can swing in pretty safely here. Go in for the conundrum of the bulls. Yep, let's go ahead and get rid of you. And then do I want to put down the... Yeah, let's put down the Restless Fortress, just so that we can get the Eternal Wanderer down next turn. And then the Legion of Ashes, it feels gross. We can't hit you. It feels disgusting. 
but I think we're just going to have to use the Legion to Ashes on the Spider. I mean, it doesn't feel that gross. It just feels not great. I mean, using this on a 3-2 Spider, I mean, we, 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 ha we have to respect our life total. So we're paying one to get rid of a 3-2, so we're effectively saving two life. I think we have to, and the next turn we're already just setting up for the Eternal Wanderer anyway. So I think this is just the best way to do it. Um, probably should be okay, but we'll see. Haywire Might, we don't really have anything that the Haywire Might is really threatening right now. So another little spider. They definitely want cards in the graveyard for some point, but the, the thing with the spider is they're not conjuring the cards into their graveyard. They're putting one from the from their library into the- Ooh, we got the Black Lotus. Okay, the Black Lotus is right behind me, so absolutely- it is my privilege and honor to to go for this Black Lotus. Absolutely, I love that. And I actually... Is there anything cool we can do with the Black Lotus right now? I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, uh, it's right behind me. Let me, let's go make him a thinking. I'm really just kind of like... Here, um, let me open my OBS, which is kind of what I used to record. Uh, yeah, there it is. I wanted to make sure I was pointing in the right direction, but I am. Let's go for the Eternal Wander, and we still have this Black Lotus. I don't really want to disrespect the Black Lotus by just discarding it. I mean, come on, it's the Black Lotus. Alright, so I guess we'll just go ahead and make a 2-2. I think we can kind of just hold the Malcolm up here. Mm. We can win this together. Do I want to swing in? They're going to use the food token, which is kind of nice. I would prefer that. They had like an edict or something. They like said, if we could swing with the Malcolm, but I think I'd rather just trade the Malcolm with something, or at least maybe like Chump Lock or something. I think the Eternal Wanderer should be enough to kind of put us over. Unless they have an edict. Oh my gosh, that edict is brutal. Fortunately, it does not look like, like that, because they would have just done it already. Maybe. They are target. They are, they are looking at it. Don't be looking at my, my Wander... Er, ugh. Don't look at my... Not the Wandering Emperor, the Eternal Wanderer. Like I said, what, you're, okay, that's fine. But that's actually not a big deal at all. We can actually flicker that thing, which is why I love the Eternal Wanderer in the sex so much. You can just flicker the um, this card. You can do the, the one ring on your own one ring so that you don't keep taking all that massive damage. Like There's a lot of things you can do with it. Yeah, I guess we'll lose the life. Well, it's only one card, right? Yeah, we just, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll take the life. We we'll got the Mox Jet. All right, so the Mox Jet is no Black Lotus. I'll tell you that right now. So I think we can probably at least swing in with Malcolm to kind of fix us up here. We could also go for the Black Lotus and go for Restless Fortress. I think that is something that we could do just to kind of give us a little bit more life. I think I'm going to do that. Let's go ahead. I'm casting the Black Lotus. Feels pretty good. I'm not going to lie. All right. And I think we're going to do this, but it, let's sacrifice the Black Lotus. Let's go for Black so that I can go in for the Restless Fortress and swing in. And still have some mana left over for whatever Malcolm may bring me. Well, we don't know. I got to get rid of the Mox Jet here. And I think I am going to swing. This is a little bit aggressive. Maybe I should keep the 2-2 back. Nah, screw it. We'll just swing in. We're getting two life as well. We're going to get a, another 2-2 with the Eternal Wanderer. Plus whatever Malcolm has. Okay. Bouncing off the Might is fine. We're gonna get in there and they're gonna trip the spider. That's fine. That's fine. We can we can handle that. Create a 2-2. Thank you. I don't really wanna well now that we don't have the Malcolm, I mean I think it costs zero to play the Mox Jet, so I guess we'll just keep it in the hand, it's not a big deal. So we're at nine. This is, I mean, that was a little bit of aggressive move. Um, Terror Tide. Okay, that's fine. They're going to gain some life with the Might, but I think we're okay. That's actually not that big of a deal. Yeah, that's fine. I think, I think we're sitting pretty here. I mean, the Wanderer is just going to pretty much take over the game, I would imagine. Slash hope. The Restless Cottage, even if they do get through, they're not going to be able to hit for Leaf. Or not, I guess, well, whatever you want. They're not going to be able to kill it for five because it has four power. So I guess we'll just lose the life. And there's two lands that we get off Scott free that way. Rusko. Now Rusko comes out to play. Now we're sitting pretty good here. I think we're going to go for Rusko. If we go for the 
Mox Jet. I guess we'll go for Mox Jet and go for the Rusko. Just so that we can... Well, actually, yeah. Oh, crap. I can't count. Oopsie. It doesn't appear that I can count. Because I was going to say, we'll jump the Rusko and then just go for an extra Midnight Counter. And we don't... We can't go for the Restless Fortress that way. So, we can't go for Restless Fortress. And we already could have gone for the, uh, another counter on the Midnight Tower. Or the Midnight Clock, rather. So, I can't do math. But it's okay. It's not the end of the world. We don't have our Malcolm anyway, so that's kind of what I was uh, banking on. Or a Rona. The Malcolm and the Rona does like the discard drawing and fixing kind of nonsense here, so. Walhalla. Another Terra Tide. That's actually not that big of a deal. We're just gonna. Yeah, that's fine. Go for the Midnight Clock, and eventually, you know. I think I'll let you draw. I think I'll let you draw, but I might start flickering this thing if I can. Sure, we'll let you draw a card. And then I'm gonna, I think I'm going to start flickering that. So back up to the Midnight Clock. And we have our own. And now we have our own, which is very, very nice. And let's see if we can do this. We still do not have... We're still... Yeah, we don't have enough to go for the Restless Fortress anyway. So let's just go do this. And this actually is a double whammy. Because they actually don't even get the initial either. So we're turn up the one target artifact or creature. We're going to go ahead and hit your little orby card and we have our own orb card and i actually do have enough for the restless fortress okay it appears i really can't do math but i'm glad i checked it so let's go for this um let's shelve both of these i don't want i don't want these now if they let us draw cool if they mill cool whatever just okay it's not a big deal and what i really like about this is their orb is not going to even be able to do their thing at all so they will get it back but even for this turn, again, because it's coming in on the end step, it doesn't trigger like that. So they're not even going to be able to scry two. So very, very good. Uh, the Myth Weaver Pawk. They do get their thingy back, but they didn't get to do that. We got a go for the throat, and things are looking pretty good here. I think we're just going to go for that because whenever this card is actually really, really good. Whenever they uh, get a card to come in or uh, land, they come into the battlefield and they can draw a copy of it. And that's pretty wild. Honestly, that's pretty wild. I could just start doing... I think I'm going to go for a 2-2. Because I am going to take the life at least one more time from their orb. Because I have the Restless Fortress. I think... I don't think they really enjoy me gaining life. But at this point, I might just want to go for the, the Midnight Clock. Especially... Yeah, I think this is fine. Well, Sunfall. Do I want Sunfall? I guess we... Sunfall's okay. I mean, they do have... They are kind of a creature-based deck. And they take 7 that way. And one, two, three, one, two, three. We can put two more counters on the midnight clock this way. So they're down to eight life. And I think we're looking pretty good. I think we're looking pretty good. The control deck is controlling. The Golgari deck is not rocking, that's for sure. Ooh. Swarming Emergence. Okay, not the end of the world. Oh, they actually don't even have a land. They don't even have a land to conjure and duplicate with the Myth uh, Weaver. So that's actually really, really nice. I thought for sure they did, but they, because they don't, that's going to be nice. So I guess we'll just lose the life. I don't think they can do 11 damage with one card, so I think it's going to be okay. Let's just do the Midnight Clock stuff. Yep. Sure to sure. Legions to Ashes. Well... Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to get rid of the Myth Weaver. Um, just trying to think what's the best line here. We have the Restless Fortress. The Midnight Clock eventually is going to be able to go off, but I think we'll go for the... Let's just... Let's just cut them off. I know it's kind of... I don't want to say boring. It's kind of straightforward. Yeah, nothing too flashy here. The Eternal Wanderer we can use on the orb again. I think I probably will. Or should I just make a 2-2? I think we'll go for a 2-2. It might be a little bit... The edge of your plane. might be a little bit of too aggressive, but the Restless Fortress is going to be able to alleviate a little bit of that. We do overall gain one life here, so... Down to one they go. They're going to let us draw whatever it is. We actually have an Alkazat and a Sarize. I don't know if it's Cerise or Sarize, but... I guess we'll go ahead and give the Slayer of Fear a little bit of love here. And I just... 10 damage. I'm going to let them draw with the Orb. With four land and out five, I just think that we are going to be able to take a lethal next turn. I just really don't see a world where they can't. Sheldred is not going to be enough. Restless Fortress and two tokens is going to be enough. And we just slowly but surely just outpace them. That's going to be a good game. We're going to let them draw, but that's going to be 99. Yep, draw. Yep, they, they know it. GG's.